Alright guys, so let's talk about Candyman 2, Farewell to the Flesh. Even though it has, doesn't have the number 2 in the title, it is the second Candyman film. And I watched this for the first time after this year watching the original one for the first time. Which, the original Candyman actually blew me away. I thought that that was actually a really great horror movie. A great uh, use of sympathizing with the villain in the original. But also this one just makes it even better sympathizing with the villain. Um, now, this one, I really do love the fact that this is an origin story. Like, it's it's in the present, in 1995, after the first movie, which was in 92, but the villain Candyman, uh, or Daniel Robitaille, uh, you get the actual full origin story with this character where you realize that he is a, he was a black slave. And whenever you get to the revelation, or the reveal of what he, why he is what he is, what they did to him, um, really just gives a new layer to this character. And I think that this sequel is really underrated um, in just terms of making this character get so much more depth to him. Like, I really thought that this did a great job with characters and make this character so, like, you feel so bad for this guy. All he did was in slave times he was uh he he had relations with a white woman and then he got killed and burnt and like stung to death by bees and then burnt so it's crazy in how this character goes through so much but i love the fact that this is a sympathetic villain um that's all he did he just was he slept with a white woman a lot and that made this happen which is horrible um, so I really enjoyed that a lot. And I also want to mention that Bill Condon directed this, which is a really weird, like, director. I, I didn't think this guy directed this type of movie. Because the, Bill Condon is the guy who directed, like, The Twilight, Breaking Dawn, Part 1 and 2, Dreamgirls, Beauty and the Beast, the remake, live-action remake them from Disney. Like, he directed all of these musicals, or Happy Light movies. And then he directed this one. Like, I saw during this time, like, he directed other thrillers, but it's just surprising in how he drastically changed genres. Like, he just, he was thrillers at the beginning of his career, and then now he does musicals. It's just, it's funny seeing that distinction between what he, I like that because it has, it gives him range. Like, he's a director with range, but it's just funny to see Bill Condon directed this. That's really interesting. Um... It, it's just really funny seeing directors with different genres do do a take on something like this. And the main character in this movie is Annie, who is actually, through a twist, related to Candyman, where she is the, literally the last in the line of of their people. Like, And I, I love that. I love that, that throughout the movie I did not expect that reveal. I did not expect that to happen. I love the fact that it, it surprised me genuinely. Um, it really takes time to spin, it really takes time for you to figure it out, or not to figure it out, for the reveal to happen. It really takes a lot of time, and it really, honestly, because the first, the first half of the movie was good, it was fine, it just was a little, just kind of okay, but then whenever we get to the reveal of Annie being related to Candyman and then his backstory completely... The movie really changed drastically for me. Like, I really did think the first half is fine. And then the second half, I really was blown away in how these characters... You get this full thing with both Annie and Candyman and their their reveals of their, of their backstories. And it really is such a cool way of making the sequel more... Um, more important and more useful as a sequel like it I felt like this movie it, it felt like these people wanted to make a sequel that continued on these this character and continued on with what he did like like instead of just being another sequel another horror sequel I felt like this did a good job of that of having really delving into these characters um and really just it's it's just overall is really cool and I like how overall it's an interesting portrayal of this care of these characters in the sequel. Like I love how this does continue on with the story, 
but does it in a, in a way where it feels like the sequel is really needed. Like, I really do like seeing Candy Meg's backstory. I do like having this Annie character realizing that she's related and she's the last of, of their kin, uh, or their lineage. That's really cool, and it's just really interesting. Um, and the kills are good, but they're not really the thing in this movie that I care about. Like, the kills are fine, but this one is more about the story, and I really like these characters. So I thought this was a really cool, underrated sequel. Um, now the third Candyman movie I've not seen yet, and I hear that it is horrendous. Like, every single person I've talked to said it's awful. So, we'll see about that one. I'll still watch it, because I am a completionist. I, I don't care, I'll still watch it, no matter how terrible it is. Even if I have to turn it off for a while and go back to it. But, I don't know when I'll watch it. I, I do want to see it though, just to say I've seen all of the Candyman movies because I did love the first one and love and like this one a lot. Um, I just hear the third one's awful, so we'll see. I bet it's gonna be pretty not good. So, um, anyways, tell me down below what you think of Candyman: Farewell to the Flesh, and thank you guys so much for watching.